Hello and welcome to the 124th episode of Growing Up Geek, the weekly podcast for geek entertainment and nostalgia. My name is Brad and I am joined by a man fresh from vehicular combat, my brother Rob. Yep, here I am. There you are. I, I'm fresh from not killing a man three times, is, is where I am. You didn't relive Twisted Metal on the streets of Philadelphia? How many of you, I mean, this this has happened so many times in my history driving a car. Bikers, well, bicyclists, yes. you know, not, not guys on Harleys, but guys on pedals, are always getting in front of me and not moving fast and, like... I'm going to hit them. I'm going to kill one one of these days. I just know. Yeah. And I don't understand. Like because you could have Lance Armstrong in front of you on the fastest bike in the world, pedaling his guts he- right. out downhill, you- he's still going to be going like 40 miles an hour. And this was like rush hour traffic this morning. So this guy, he's pedaling his guts out on the side of the road. Yeah. And I I slowly pass him and and survive, but then I get to a red light and he passes me, and I have to like do this like three yeah. times. And the whole time I'm just thinking to myself, dude, there's a sidewalk. Ride well, the bike on the-, the sidewalk. To which everybody replies, and I think you are about to say this too. Well, yeah. in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, you're not allowed to ride a bicycle on on the sidewalk. Well, dude, I don't know. That I think it's bullcrap because I always see those signs that say "share the road," and I'm thinking, how is this supposed to occur? He goes forty tops. Okay, no, that's being generous. I think a gazelle goes forty. Like <laughs> he goes like twenty tops, and you're like, oh lord. If I see a motorcycle or if I see a bicycle in front of me, I cannot help but picture a man just running in front of my car. A wobbly man on one A wobbly leg. man is running for his life. A pale man is running in front of my vehicle and doing a bad job of it. So suddenly I'm in a movie where I'm like chasing a guy down. It's really uncomfortable. How it's do you karma share? police all of a sudden. <laughs> You're just yeah, like... that, this is why I can't ride a motorcycle or a bike because I'm just like I'm no match for anything else out there. Share the road? Like, well, I don't it makes get it. me mad. Like, you, you ask people, well, why why should not bicyclists stay off of sidewalks? And they're like, well, they might hit pedestrians. A, That's way what better. That's way more, I'm more <laughs> preferable to a, a semi-truck <laughs> smashing them and crumpling into metal and right, meat. I, that, that's exactly what I'm saying. Like, um, here's here's the scenario where, where a bicycle hits a pedestrian. Ow. Ugh. Here's a scenario <laughs> where like, a truck, <laughs> and yeah. the guy's twisted up under and all the children. Like, the, yeah, children are. He becomes for nothing life. more than a smell in on the the, the truckers. Like, what is that? <laughs> like, yeah, well, that is some. I, I saw a YouTube clip of a of a train his barreling head explodes towards explodes under the tire. <laughs> oh, no, no, Rob, no. <laughs> uh, I saw a YouTube video though of a cat. This is graphic intro to the show. Graphic oh, audio. We've, um, we've dropped the family rating on this one. Apparently. But yeah, no, there was a YouTube clip of a cow standing on railroad tracks as this train is barreling towards it. And you just hear the conductor. He has nothing else that he can do. He just goes, you dumb son of a... <laughs> you know, It's like, <laughs> what else are you going to do? Like, the guy is just standing there and you can't move your train, so... But it was like a light thud, you know. It's like you can't. Anyway. I like that there was one of like a rabbit on a NASCAR track, and basically one mo- one frame there's a rabbit, the next frame there's just a stain. It was just dust. Like, <laughs> yeah, that's what happens. That's what happens at that speed. So uh, I don't know, P- cyclists, please, for your own safety, for God's sakes, get out of the way. Uh, a message from your local geek podcast, which has nothing. It makes no sense whatsoever. Um, I will say I've had my own form of vehicular danger lately because I just bought a new uh, 2008 Mazda 3 and it's got tinted windows. Congratulations! Thank you, thank you. It, it's got tinted windows though, and I was looking up Pennsylvania law because I'm like, can I get pulled over for this? And my friends are telling me I can, which immediately flashed me in my head to that scene in Night Shift where Michael Keaton is like in a new car with tinted windows. And a cop pulls yeah. up right next to him, and he's like giving him the finger and shouting, "We got teenage girls in here, you know." <laughs> and then the cop says, "And he's like, Girl Scouts of America, you know." I love that scene, and, and now I feel yeah, like they just yeah. the police just take <laughs> off. Right, the <laughs> yeah. police man is looking at the window and doesn't react. I mean, it's not realistic, but yeah. So I right. um, I'm gonna have to keep an eye on that. But anyway, that's our that's our vehicular update for the week. That's right. <laughs> yeah, but let's talk about what geeky things occurred this week, as we generally do here at the beginning of the show. What do you got? All right. First of all, Legendary Pictures has acquired the rights to the Mass Effect movie. Oh, boy. 
Sorry, I was pausing to take a drink. Uh, it, it is interesting, but it's also the kind of thing that happens every single week. You know, a new movie yeah. like Gears of War, or whatever, is a, a new video game is acquired. Um, but this is one that's very cinematic. But I think this is one of the first that I actually kind of care about. Exactly, that's yeah. the thing. Is it has a plot, mm-hmm. as opposed to like Prince of Persia or, or these other things, where it's like yeah. loosely stitched together and, and the vehicle for some sort of movie star. This is one of those games where they have to actually cut down the amount of story to make a movie, as opposed to blow up the story and try to, oh my you, know, you know what I mean? It's like 40 hours of story. Dude, and, and, and on top of that, like the, uh, the back catalog of information there's going to be like as much detail in this universe as, as tolkien has you know like the hilt of the gun will have right inscriptions on it that mean stuff yeah I've, i keep so, hearing like, this i've never played mass effect but i keep hearing the universe is like so unique and i love that i love dune for that reason you know just well, you walk in and you have a codex that updates in there's even like deeper levels to that where like you have the stuff where where there's narration and so you can find out just about all the different races and stuff. And then even beyond that, there's stuff that doesn't even have narration, but it's just for you to read. Each planet has a description about it. Like yeah. everything is crazy detailed in that place. So So here's the obvious question. Shepard, the the main character, right? Sure. Shepard is a character that you design yourself. Kind of like in World of Warcraft, like you create their face, their hair. You decide whether it's a man or a woman. You right. know, the only thing that's already set is is the uh, the voice. Now there is a default character which you see on the cover and stuff. But I'm yeah. wondering, you know, what what do you expect, gentle listener or uh, people who follow me on Twitter? I've already asked this question. Who would you want to play your shepherd? Mm-hmm. You know, and maybe that's a better way to put it. Look at the guy you created or girl. Mine is kind of like a young Alec Baldwin or something. Yeah, I'd, I'd be curious about what people would say. I, you know, I, I'm I'm almost positive they would choose the default Shepherd, but I would like to see them. I mean, the, the problem is these are the kind of movies that cost a lot of money. You know, Mass yeah. Effect feels like a high budget movie. Uh, yeah. I don't think you could pull that off. Well, then again, there is District Nine. You know, as the test case, so maybe anything's possible now. But um, any other things that you would like to see in a movie? Like, is there a key character or storyline that you must see on screen that you think would be excellent? Oh, Rex, of course. They have to have the Krogan Shepherd, yeah. the big yeah. burly guy. Um, and that's the thing is, I'm I'm hoping that they actually have the characters from the game. The I mean, the universe is fertile enough to have a separate story, but frankly, I th- I think it'd be a disappointment to not tie in more with the game. Yeah. And uh, so that's going on. That's going on. Uh, so speaking of science fiction futuristic scenarios, um, have you been following this oil leak in the Gulf of Mexico? I, I don't know if you have. Yeah, yeah. I, it's It's been on the news enough, and it's like the worst disaster in history. <laughs> so for those who don't know, just oil is just spewing out of the earth into the Gulf of Mexico, and they're trying to figure out how to plug it up. Anyway, I'm just, I'm just viewing a webcam online the other night. I, it was about like 2 in the morning on the weekend and I just I pulled up this live webcam of the ocean floor and you just see this oil spewing out and I'm like my god and the next next to it was a news story that says Kevin Costner may have a solution that's the actor Kevin Costner by the way <laughs> so I was like now th- I know I'm like now this I'm interested in so I go and I read and it turns out that during the filming of Waterworld Kevin Costner became interested in like oil uh, spills and in cleaning them up and i guess it's because part of that movie deals with a giant oil rig or whatever and obviously there's a lot of ocean okay so so far it sounds like it's success worthy <laughs> right so so he's been investing like millions of dollars i think like 15 million dollars and like 20 years into research for how to how to take care of these spills which kind of i mean obviously it won't plug up the hole down there and uh, supposedly the pressure is so intense that they're just like at a loss but it well, may help to clean up the water. It, what it is is like this large metal cylinder that spins the water and it kicks out of one side reusable oil and the other side like 99% pure ocean water back into the ocean. So it sounds cool, but I love that like Exxon is considering working now with Kevin Costner. And if it does work, it will truly vindicate Waterworld. <laughs> I was thinking of this like 
Kevin Costner just needs to now rise out of the sea with his webbed toes and be like, <laughs> I told you all, you know? It, it, it justifies the existence of Waterworld. <laughs> like it's, the movie was terrible, but it saved the earth at the end of the day. Right, wouldn't it be great if it's like right in time for the Blu-ray release of Waterworld or something and they're like, you know. Oh, I'm sure they would hop on board with that. They're like, well, let's release the Blu-ray. This is in the news. Yeah, that was just weirdness. I'll, I'll kick it back to you. That was, that was just an oddball thing. <laughs> that was awesome. Um... All right, it wouldn't be Growing Up Geek if we didn't talk about this next story. Uh, There has been pretty much an official leak rumor thing that indicates that Rock Band 3 is going to have piano in it. There you go. (laughs) Now, Brad, tell us what this official thing was, because you you had to dig this up for me, because I heard about it, but I needed you to clarify yes is you're still internet list so i had to pull this up i was like just pull it up on your browser and you're like i don't have internet it's like whoops <laughs> uh, uh, but yeah, i can't walk anymore <laughs> if the gentle listener will download uh, the current green day uh, rock band green day demo that's on xbox live at, at the end of that demo when you quit you'll see this screen of rock band three it's basically just the three logo and then all of the instrument icons uh, the difference here is that the the uh, microphone icon is actually a series of three icon- microphones, and there's an icon for a piano at the end. So that's pretty definitive. It seems like the most most obvious thing ever. Like everyone made this joke. What are they going to have now? Piano? I swear to you, anyone I tell Rock Band Three is coming out, what are they going to add? A piano? And it's not in a good way, by the way. Nobody's like excited because a piano is freaking hard to play. I don't know about you. Then again, it could light up. Ooh. Yeah, that's the thing is like because the piano is just button pushes, you know, like there was a thing with the guitar where you could represent it with the five buttons and the strumming and it'd feel like a guitar. Uh, the drums were this kind of half thing where it it's basically you're, you are, in fact, playing the drums. Right. Yeah. And then but the piano is like, how are you going to fake this? Like you're going to have people who want it to well, yeah, be the key- keyboard stand or something unless it's a keytar which wouldn't be a problem well I, I mean that's the thing is that wouldn't be a problem with some people the other people would want like a full 110 key like give me everything right you know and they want to play it but like you know what's the interface going to look like it it has to be you know easy to read on the screen it, it can't be a, a bunch of lines all like rolling down like piano roll yeah, no, you're Paper. right. I didn't even think about that. You can't have a hundred icons coming at <laughs> coming at the player. Man, that is weird. Maybe, maybe what I said before about the lights, there is no interface on the screen. Maybe they just follow along with lights that are lighting up on the piano. You know what I mean? Like I, I know what you mean, but I really like that. That would actually be also very difficult. Like I, I don't know, like because this technology exists. Like our aunt actually has a grand piano that lights up, and you just play what lights up. Oh, dude, how about this? There's no piano peripheral. Instead, there's an app for your iPhone or your Android phone <laughs> nice. that syncs to a piano thing where the, the, the thing scrolls right to the keys, and you have to hit the keys on there, and that syncs up with the game. <laughs> Whoa, you went all futuristic <laughs> with it. I know. I went, I, I, I went through the third wall there. <laughs> well, the thing is, like, this is not the Rock Band 3 that I expected. I mean, it, well, granted, we don't know much, but... When they say Rock Band 3, I think it needs to really count because 2 lets you continue to buy songs. I mean, 2 is nearly perfect to me. And if they're going to add things, I don't I don't really know. It, it, I don't think it should just be incremental. Well, this doesn't feel incremental. To, like, not nearly as incremental as, as the Guitar Hero series has been. This yeah. seems to me to to be a legit enough reason to have a, an official you know number upgrade. First of all, the three-part harmony... Which the Beatles offered, but wasn't uh, it didn't transfer over to the other to Rock Band Two. So now to have three part harmony, and you're going to be able to download songs with harmony, and be able to do that whole thing. Crazy. You know, we can do like the the under pressure back and forth, <laughs> Bowie, Freddie Mercury again, and and that'll be awesome. Yeah. But then now piano like that that definitely is like look, you're going to have to buy Rock Band Three. Right. Even if you have Rock Band 2. Yeah, well, that that's about all we have to say about Rock Band 3, I think. I, I Honestly, um, you know, Rock Band was the very first show that we ever did. So, of course, we owe it to bring that up. But uh, we'll, we'll have to see what happens. I don't know. 
you know, I'm always excited for rock band. I'm always excited for music. Exactly. So uh, another quick nugget here for you. Yeah. Uh, it, it should excite you probably the most is that HP is is not killing their slate. This was sort of what was rumored uh, when we talked about Tablet Wars a few weeks ago. Uh, <laughs> they're not killing their slate, but okay. according to like a Japanese Palm executive or somebody Japanese, somebody <laughs> somewhere. Where is this going? <laughs> sorry, there's, there's one source for this, but it's that Palm is going to be using their web OS on the HP slate. Wow. And uh, that's what that's kind of what we were hoping that they would do. And that's all I have to say is, oh, that would be such a great interface. And at the same time, no apps. So that could that could be, you know, the realism of it is uh, it sets in like, are they going to have a good comic book app? Are they going to have, you know, the, the type of apps that you want on a tablet? Well, I can say as a Palm user, I, I've seen that uh, if if an app is popular enough on iPhone, it'll bubble over onto the Palm Pre. Um, I'm glad that they're still trying to keep it alive, and that still gives it a chance to actually happen. You know, maybe Android, like Google, will be like, "Well, Android apps, you know, let's open these up to to go over." Now, I recently just saw a new Palm. Uh, Palm Pre commercial on TV, and this was surprising because it was like you know last I heard they were dead, and so this I was betting was the first like HP funded commercial. It might be, and it was it was cool. It was finally like yes, this is showing kind of what my experience using it is, which is right. it's it's a guy walking. Yeah, it's kind of like what the BlackBerry Six thing was, but not being stupid and yeah. dancing. No, I think I've I think people have seen this. It, it's it's where it's like floating in front of them. Yeah, and he's he's interfacing it, and if if you've seen that, yeah, it's it's an improvement. It's not this, you know, Tampax commercial. <laughs> you know, like, yeah, what do I want to do tonight? I mean, there, I think I will talk to my friends on my Palm Pre. I mean, yeah, <laughs> I, I, I didn't have much to add, to add about the HP Slate. Um, that's pretty much the only news we'll have to see. Unfortunately, you know, I, I hope that HP learns their lesson and opens it up because it's certainly working for Google. You know, they've got like thirty so phones now on Android. HP just needs to open that sucker up and let people develop with Palm. And I sound like a broken record, so I'm just going to turn it back over to the next thing. All right. Uh, the last big news that I can think of <laughs> that's happened was Insomniac Games. Yes. You got that right? Insomniac? Yes. Uh, creators of such wonderful gems as Crash Bandicoot and yes. uh, Drake's Fortune. Yes. They have gone officially multi-platform via Electronic Arts. Wait a minute. Doesn't Naughty Dog make uh, Drake and Crash Bandicoot and Insomniac made uh, Ratchet? Uh oh. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> Giant faux pas here at the beginning of we'll the show. We'll just delete that story. Oh, well, no, we can still we can still be excited about this. Uh, it's oh, just, all right, yay! Woo! Insomniac, I think, makes the Ratchet series, and they made they made um, Resistance. Oh yeah. Not quite as exciting as Naughty Dog. I know what you were thinking. Yeah. Oh. Uh. But, um, all right, oh, I'll get, sorry. I'll, I'll, I still have a reason to get a PS3. <laughs> yeah, there you go. So I get Drake's Fortune and Heavy Rain. Yeah, the PS3 owner still there is still a reason to get your system. And some sack boys. Yeah, uh, weirdness. Um, I think it's time basically now to move into our main topic. Now this week, Lost had its finale, and everyone online's talking about this. So we're gonna throw our hat into the ring. Um, Rob, you are way behind on Lost, so you were not involved <laughs> in this. Like I watched like two episodes in the season five. So right. So just imagine the kind of nuggets he could bring. <laughs> I'm just going to be over in the corner plugging my ears and humming to myself, okay? Yeah, there you go. So <laughs> we're going to actually play some recorded audio that happened the night that the Lost finale end, uh, aired. I had sort of a party over here, invited my friend Mike over, and uh, Amber was also involved. And we just basically, anytime there was a commercial break, we just sort of spewed out our thoughts on what had happened. So you're getting sort of a stream of consciousness uh, from people that are learning as they go uh, what's happening, and uh, I hope you enjoy that. <laughs> Lost finale, commercial break number one. Oh, crap, that's loud. Jack is the new Jacob. They just rehashed everything from last week in the first ten minutes. I gotta say, not approving of the, uh, I've got a bad feeling about this. Star Wars uh, reference. And, and a double one, too, because he said, this guy's worse than Yoda. Oh! Wah, wah, wah. Jacob decided to just protect this light without really knowing what it is. So does Jack. It feels un- unlike Jack to me. Jack has been looking for a purpose the whole time, and now he has a purpose, so... It's not a surprise to me that he was going to be protecting everyone. To me, it is like Desmond's original number pushing thing because he was just pushing these numbers not knowing why. 
And they're like, uh, what happens if you don't? Oh, we all die. Same thing with this. Jack's like, oh, I got to protect this light hole. What happens if you don't? We all die. Show's starting. Commercial break number two. Go into the concert. The man in black wants to make the island sink, and he's somehow involving Desmond in his plans. Bernard and Rose are back. I'm glad to see we uh, know what happened to them. And the dog's back. Somehow he lived this whole time. He said he wouldn't touch Rose and Bernard, but if he sinks the island, they'll just be uh, sinking with it. (laughs) (laughs) Right, yeah. Rose and Bernard say they don't want to get involved. I think that's very smart of them. They've been living this whole time and had no drama. I like Rose and Bernard for that reason. Okay, commercial break number three. On the island world, Miles finds Richard on the alternate world, Juliet Ultrasound's son. Jin remembers them on the island and hugging 500 times. And they now know English. But Juliet doesn't remember them, so... Yeah, does Juliet not remember them because she's not one of the chosen people, perhaps? I don't know. But Faraday, he had a flashback. Wait, a flashback or a flash sideways? Whatever. I have to ask, like, why is this exciting if a show creates another version of itself and then flashes to it and we're supposed to be emotional? It means to me that this alternate life that they have is being created by someone, something, somewhere, and they aren't supposed to remember but they can i think the the whole purpose of this the sideways flashing is so you don't feel so bad when they massacre all the people on the regular (laughs) the regular island so you're still going with the massacre theory for sure commercial break number four cowboy music plays while (laughs) while several people march towards a shootout a hawaiian tumbleweed was ready to fly through the scene there mike's theory of a bloodbath seems to be holding yeah it's just weird meanwhile in alternate land Locke laughs in an uncomfortable moment while uh jack prepares to operate on his spine when he says that he might kill him he thought that was funny (laughs) he might save him in one universe and kill him in the other that could be cool. Meanwhile, Richard's Just for Men begins to wear off. <laughs> <laughs> At the age of 500, he'll get to finally die, perhaps. Right, but you, you said you wanted him to be able to get peace. Yeah, he wanted to die in the earlier episode, so. But now he wants to live, live, apparently, once he gets a gray hair. You know who else wants to live? Frank Lapidus! <laughs> that guy just can't die. The name just sounds vulgar. He says that he could fly the plane because he's a pilot, and then Miles is all of a sudden really excited. <laughs> But he didn't know that he was a pilot before? It's awkward as Locke's death laugh or whatever during the spinal surgery. He apparently survived that uh, blast yeah. from the bomb and the six-foot steel door that <laughs> smashed him in the face. Which, once again, the real hero of Lost, Frank Lapidus. For several days, too, in the ocean. Like, he's amazing. Chest hair is incredibly gray. You said Tom Selleck, but he's just a haggard-looking dude. That's Tom Selleck. <laughs> All right, commercial break number five. On the alternate world, Juliet is Jack's ex- ex-wife slash mother of his child on the island jack's surprise may be that desmond is a weapon but as he lowers a rope around desmond desmond tells him hey get excited there's an alternate world out there so it doesn't matter what we do here and jack says it does matter i said it's goonies that's all i can say (laughs) all right puff daddy is letting us know you cannot outrun him because he is black so it's time to record commercial break all right on the alternate world we have the number of people who now have deja sideways increases saeed breaks up a uh, fight and touches shannon and shannon and him remember their love sessions together yep we don't get to see boons and we never got to see hurley's do you think everybody is just gonna eventually flash and somehow that's gonna matter toward the end of this here well they're probably all gonna show up at that concert and the stage lights will come on and jimmy kimmel will come in and start interviewing them and right, yeah. it'll just transition We'll end with a musical number. Played by Charlie and uh, Jack's son. <laughs> does Locke even know what he's lowering him down there for? I mean, does he seem like he has a plan? Well, I don't know if Locke or Jack has a plan. I think it almost looks like they're just... They're saying, I don't want to go down there. Neither do I. Send Desmond. All right. <laughs> I love the amount of clueless people marching toward this vague goal. No one knows what this hole is, and they're all fighting over it. That's the show lost. You're lost. I don't know. Well, they only have, uh, what, an hour and a half left? So we'll see how it goes. Okay, next commercial break. So in Sideways World, the benefit concert begins. Charlie is awakened from his drunken stupor by Charlotte. Yeah, and then uh, theoretical physicist Daniel Faraday on piano. Faraday there. He's uh, Daniel Whitmore. Charlie, this is the most mismatched band ever. <laughs> is like wearing mascara and has like his drive shaft tattoos. We know this from several episodes ago that Daniel asked for this for his birthday or something to play with drive shafts. So. I don't know if Claire and Daniel 
officially had their flashback or flash right. sideways. It was yeah. unclear. It was unclear if Charlie was flashing from stage. He had one at least twice. One in the airplane when he almost choked, and another right. when he was drowning. Desmond looks very pleased by all of this, sitting there at the concert. Meanwhile, on the island, uh, Desmond is pull, he, he goes and finds One-Eyed Willie in the cave at the bottom and pulls the island's cork, <laughs> releasing the water down. I actually thought that was a very cinematic scene. I liked that. Yeah, it was definitely Goonies, and all the water is now gone. The stream is dried, and now there's a volcanic eruption. That's all that the cork was there for, to well, keep a volcano like from erupting. Cooling whatever the, you know, hell that was down there that's now going to erupt in sink. The red smoke monster. Yeah. And now Locke can be beat up by Jack, and Jack can be beat up by Locke. Wow, okay, Jack running full speed towards Locke, jumping into the air, probably being launched off some kind of... Mortal Kombat move, yeah. yeah. It's this thing you see in action movies where someone's launched off of an air mattress or whatever, and then they punch him in the air. It happened in Clash of the Titans. It was in the Clash of the Titans trailer. He's like, Rah! coming down. Anyway, that happened. Claire is giving birth. Kate finally has her flight. I'm really just coming to the belief that Damon Lindelof and Carlton Cuse love sad, mopey montages of people reuniting. They will purposely draw characters away from each other just so they can reunite them and then have you feel sad. That Do you get tears rolling down your eyes? It's just a second show that isn't about an island. It's about a, co- a benefit concert and a lady giving birth. Well, yeah, and there was also the conversation between Desmond and Mrs. Faraday that you guys oh, talked okay. over, and we missed the most yeah. important part. Those two characters well, know what's going on. She said, are you going to take my son with you? And he said, no, your son's not coming with me, which right. means Daniel's not going. Going where, though? Where is anyone going? They're in an alternate world. How, they can't get away from it, can they? Away for good. They're going to heaven. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, so on the island, there's a giant earthquake. Ben gets trapped under a log. Uh, Sawyer thinks that Locke was probably right that the island is sinking because it looks like all hell's breaking loose on the island. And Locke has a boat, which leads to Jack's punch move in midair. Why isn't he doing a jump kick? Uh, wouldn't that be more realistic instead of a jump punch? <laughs> jump kicks are so 1994. Whatever, I think they're cooler. All right, the uh, commercial break has happened, and I'm hearing talk of severe flashes. What are you guys talking about? Well, what we've noticed is you can have a mini flash but not go all the way and have everything revealed. and so Jack, Partial nudity instead of full well, frontal. You need the full frontal in order to, to, <laughs> to get the full flash. Um, oh, lots of flashing going on in this show. <laughs> but uh, apparently Jack hasn't had his full flash yet, but Locke had one because yeah. looking down at his wiggling toe or right. whatever had... Yeah. I think that's too much full frontal of that that yeah. shot of Terry O'Quinn's toe. What is going on down there? I must say, maybe, maybe it was a stunt toe. We don't know whose toe that really. <laughs> we was. can't confirm that it was. It may have been a body double. But if you're the production designer, clip the nail on your actor's toe before showing it to us in massive detail. Yeah. Also, in HD, it's really yeah. harmful. I'm sorry. That's what HD was invented for. That was gross. <laughs> Reminds me of Kill Bill. If you remember when they show Uma Thurman's foot, like 50 foot high on the screen, it's like that is too close for anyone's foot. I agree. In the other world, the jump punch is edited out and apparently has no climax whatsoever. You you said about, you haven't felt this gypped. I haven't felt this gypped since they deleted the scene where in transporter he deflects the missile with the tea tray. Tea tray missile deflection. The yeah. key <laughs> scene. This is going to be embarrassing on DVD when Lost Season 6 comes out because he jump punches clearly and then the next, when it comes back from commercial, uh, nothing. The DVD is going to have like scenes that were deleted out or something. I don't know. But... Locke stabs Jack after getting his jaw smashed 500 times. He would not be alive. But anyway, he's still alive, and he kills Locke because Kate shoots him in the back. Jack got stabbed hard enough that any doctor would know it's not good between the ribs. And he rolls Locke off of a cliff, which really needed that James Bond moment where he looks down. Because he was looking down at this crumpled body, and you expect him to watch that first step. It's a doozy. Something like that. I would agree. Oh, I don't watch James Bond. Yeah, what? <laughs> I don't watch James Bond. Okay, another short one. So on the island, uh, Frank continues to use his piloting skills to repair a 737, apparently. And uh, Jack is bleeding out, and uh, Kate and Jack have a tearful maybe goodbye where he says, I love you. He's going to go replug the uh, hole in the island, I guess, or try to. And uh, Hurley and, and Ben are going to go with him. Kate and Sawyer are going to fly away. In the alternate world, Sawyer shows Jin and Sun a picture of a criminal-looking Saeed and says, this man is going to kill you, and their response is, 
uh, no, he isn't. We'll be all right. As everyone would think that <laughs> when they saw that picture of Saeed. And Sawyer is confused yet again. Yeah. And their response is, we'll see you there. And he says, where? It's a reunion special. The Jimmy Kimmel show is what they're referring to. Okay, the next commercial break. More. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Did Hurley flash when he saw Libby? Yeah, where's Libby? A couple episodes ago when he when Libby met Hurley, yeah. that's when they had their flashback. Right. So I, Hurley's had had this flash that's gone on for a while. Yeah, earlier we said we couldn't remember if he did, but I just it just came to me. Or so. so I was in the bathroom for some of this segment, if you guys have to let me know, but I, I did see that basically Sawyer and Juliet had their flash together. They reunited. I actually thought this was pretty emotional, you know, remembering their prior lives, and it's a way of vindicating the fact that she had died is they get a second chance to actually, you know, hug each other. I, I really thought that was cool. Um, they killed almost everyone. It's a right. chance for everyone to kind of uh, have the relationship again. So. Yeah. But on a funny note, I do agree with Mike that it's, it's a little bit dangerous to short out a hospital power grid to get your candy bar. <laughs> There's probably people on like life, life mission. Support. <laughs> Someone get, give me my almond joy and some guy's like, oh. But if you unplug a vending machine and it shorts out a hospital, you have problems that shouldn't be... Th- I don't know. <laughs> yeah, this hospital needs a spaghetti dinner fundraiser immediately. Yeah. They just needed a, a dark moment so Sawyer and Juliet can kiss. And I like that. When he said, Juliet, it's me, I thought that actually is, works very well. The thing that you missed was Sawyer and Kate had to jump into the water because climbing down the ladder wouldn't be fast enough. And they were some dangerous jumps. They were a little scary. <laughs> That's what you it. missed. But they made it. Did any of these jumps involve a midair punch? No. Then I don't care. Okay, Hurley shouting Jack, so it's time to record this. Um, on the island, Jack basically passes the torch to Hurley, tells him that he's going to be his replacement, uh, gives him some water, some dirty water in a bottle to drink. Uh, will this work? We don't know. We don't know. It didn't look convincing, but... Is Jack still able to pass on his gift since he's now mortal and sliced and stabbed and cut? I don't know. I guess we're going to assume that he, when he passed it on, he was still mortal, but now the light is still on, he's not going to be mortal anymore. I don't know. Uh, meanwhile, Frank uh, fixed the airplane and is attempting to reverse, which caused all of us to wonder if you can reverse a 737 or whatever this is. I'm a little skeptical that he could uh, reverse and spin it around. But. My only evidence is in Just Cause 2, the video game, you cannot reverse a passenger plane. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> but yeah, so Frank's doing that, and we have basically the Ajira 6 now. Yep, and Mike was saying that Kate is the only one who is the same from those six. What a coincidence. But they do manage to take off and leave the island, and then Jack is going down there to recork the island, or going to try to. And uh, we were hoping he wouldn't have to crush Desmond's body back, stuff it into that hole. Instead, he uses the uh, he uses the previous cork, and we have a very like Last Crusade moment where the water is pouring on him, and he's yeah, Jack's dead, just like Juliet died. He now he's dying, and oh, and also in this, Jack had his flashback with Kate. Well, with uh, Jack, Juliet, uh, Sawyer, and Kate. That right. weird kind of four-person thing they had going there. You know, I, I think the alternate universe or whatever gives them the chance to pair up. They saved Desmond. Desmond isn't going to die, but he is stuck on the island with Ben and Hurley. He doesn't get to be on the airplane <laughs> with threesome. everyone else. So it's going to be interesting. Is Ben going to be the new rival to Hurley? I don't know. <laughs> and Desmond's going to stay as the weapon for next time? <laughs> to say, overall, this episode and the end of the show is not about answers as much as it is about all these characters, basically. Okay, so that was the last uh, of Lost, basically. That was there. A lot of stuff happened in that last break. Jack was bleeding pretty crazy. Uh, Hurley was feeling the weight of being the new Jack, and he asked Ben for help, which confirms my thing. I mean, it's like Ben has not been a villain on this show for a long time, I think. I don't know. Well, he he was a villain, and I think he transformed into the non-villain. Well, he did all of this to try to be the Jacob's helper, and he didn't get that until Hurley became it. So he did say he's not going in yet. He might have a different group of people he's going to go in with. It wasn't the best time of his life. I don't know. What we're talking about with the going in, I mean, people have seen this, but uh, 
Christian Shepherd's funeral is the sort of finale of this uh, of the show, and I think they need to rename Christian Shepherd to Christian Buddhist Jewish Muslim Shepherd because he's apparently founded a new religion. If you notice the uh, stained, glass. stained glass in his church of choice or whatever, but yeah, so uh, he's not in the coffin; he's actually alive, and he somehow has all the answers for Jack. So that ended up being the uh, answer giver of the show, surprisingly, at the end. And it's, it's interesting in the beginning, like, very first season, first episode, everyone thought they were in purgatory and you know the writers and everyone denied that you know this they may not call this purgatory but it's essentially <laughs> the same thing it was a place where they mm-hmm. before moving on had to gather and um yes. suspiciously like a purgatory <laughs> yes the fans are, are vindicated well yeah he, he explains it as a place that they all created in order to find each other again and once again, this is sort of the way they chose to make this show go out. And I kind of understand that. It's a lot like Felicity, where it's like, here's your chance to have a big rap party where everyone hugs each other and smiles and we get to say goodbye to every character in one room together. Except... Except Michael, Walt, Anna Lucia, Echo, and almost Bernard and Rose, but they showed them at the very last second. Is that everybody? And the dog. The dog didn't go either. Now that we see them, were they... You know, did the island ever really exist, or did they just die in the the initial plane crash, and all of that was purgatory? Or it, it looks was, to me just like alternate realities, right? Okay, but this just, but this alternate reality was created by all of them because they didn't like the way it was going, and they wanted to reunite, and it's essentially a way to have the happy ending. They all created a do over in their head and got to have it. That's what it looks like. I guess, but it's still kind of weird that in the real life there's still this island with a plug. It's kind of strange. Right. And then they created a real world, realistic world that's purgatory so they could go to heaven or whatever. Well, I was going to say that real that island with that plug, you know, if we are going to talk about the the mysteries of Lost, uh, in the end we have a yellow light hole blocked by a plug unleashing a vague evil that is capped by a vague plug I, we really didn't ever get a true answer for what these things were i mean they were shown but they the the, the real meaning behind them wasn't the ever light, full. the smoke monster you know the beginning of their origins beyond that one episode wasn't explained and seeing the mother of jacob in the black and the man in black uh didn't really still tell us anything about how she had any of these abilities she was able to make her one son immortal and her other son Ban- uh, not able to leave the island. I mean, she had some kind of ability, but where did she come from? She said her mother. And they weren't able to kill each other and things like that. Right. Yeah, and there's so many questions that aren't answered. Like I said, the Dharma drop and how Dharma could get to the yes, island. You are vindicated, by the way. Uh, people wrote into this podcast and said, don't worry, the Dharma drops will be answered. And no, they were not. In the end, you were correct. We never found out how Dharma was able to get back to the island and drop food. Like I said, they don't answer all the questions, yeah. and it made me mad. Like, it's nice to see everyone happy in the end, and okay, they go to heaven together, but what? You keep saying heaven. I, I don't know. Yeah, but. It's totally heaven. I don't care what anyone says. It's the Buddhist heaven. It's, it's the, the Buddhist Muslim Islam Christian heaven. heaven. It's- I mean, some of the people, I mean, I don't know whether Michael wasn't there because he murdered people, but I mean, but they kind of all Walt do? People. What did Walt do? Walt did One nothing. Was Echo, was Echo was good in the end, even though they said he did evil things. That's why the Black Smoke Monster killed him. But no, he... I really think Michael at some point got off this show for reasons other than his character. I mean, there's something going on in his real acting contract or whatever. And what about Rousseau and Alex? I mean, they were on the island, but they died a long time ago. And They got most of them, but there's probably some things preventing some of those actors from even showing up. Yeah, maybe they... I don't know. Maybe it was the intention to have everyone there and they just couldn't or... And CG them in. <laughs> Pull a uh, Anakin edited in at the end of yeah. Star Wars kind of situation. Yeah, I don't know. Um, it's interesting. So that is apparently what Lost was about. Lost was about an island that emitted a evil that if it was not blocked by a stone cork, it would end everything. And so a mother had two children. She had abilities to tell them to protect it. And he called a group of passengers from an airplane to be his replacements. This entire show was about protectors. It was about protectors for a yellow light on this island. What that light was has never been revealed, which means that the entire plot of this show is still a question mark. But we obviously know that over time, Hurley ends up dying, so he either fails or passes on to someone else, and Ben dies. Why do we know that? 
it, because they're going to heaven together. Christian said, all of them have died at some point, some later than you, some yeah. before you. So Hurley died, Ben died, Desmond died, Penny died. They're all there together. So you're not in that alternate reality unless you died in the other one? Yeah. Okay, all well, right. But there was the, he said there was no real time, there's no now, so everyone dies at some point. So I think they were just, yeah. the people on the Ajira plane... You know, the Jira Six. The Jira Six probably <laughs> landed and lived their lives and died at some point, and then that's where they... Because Kate did say, I've missed you for so long. So she probably lived for a long time right. before she saw Jack again. I still always in my head imagine this show would end with like a long, gray-bearded Jack sitting alone on this island or something. And, you know, I guess that's one of those questions we'll never have answered is how they shaved on this island. I don't know kept his buzz cut and kept his beard you know five o'clock shadow eternally i don't know you're not even allowed to have razors i mean i guess they could have gone through the check-in luggage i don't know just that i don't care about yeah i i really liked the episode i i think they did a good job it was you know combined all the characters and in retrospect i think because the answers probably would have been extreme or far-fetched that maybe we really don't want to know what the light was or the the core essence of where the smoke monster what he was or where he came from and well i know you mentioned like you're not sure what's going to happen now for your tv viewing like this was a show for better or for worse that everybody pretty much watched and everybody talked about yeah i think you said before this started that it's probably your favorite show of recent years or yeah i definitely think it was you know the most anticipated show to watch week after week right. and you know i'll probably have to sit and think about the the final episode and and then rewatch all of the seasons to kind of gather how they put it together. Yeah, you know, you're going to go back and rewatch, right? You said you're starting it over here again. Well, not right away, but I think it's <laughs> starting some, tonight. Starting tonight. But at some point I do think that I'll probably watch it just to, you know, knowing now what I know, go back mm-hmm. and and see whether it really was a, you know, a well thought out uh, yeah. TV series. But I think it was because it, we all watched it. We're still watching yeah. it, so for better or for worse, I mean, like I said, we all had these conversations and we all talked about it a lot. I mean, I almost feel like you needed to talk about it to help explain it mm-hmm. because it's so complex and maybe convoluted. But yeah, I mean, we definitely still had something to talk about every week because of Lost. ABC is going to be in trouble. Yeah. What do you think uh, about the last episode? I mean, do you did you like it or? Um, I liked it. I still wanted them to answer all my questions that they didn't answer. I wanted them to show Walt and Michael in some way. They didn't do what I wanted. <laughs> but, I mean, everyone's happy in the end, so it's a happy ending, I guess. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, we're going to watch Breaking Bad is, is how this is going to end for Amber and I. That's our favorite show right now on TV. And, and this episode actually aired right over top of it. So it was like, ooh, sneaky move. But uh, we'll see where ABC goes from here, if they can replace it. There's all these new fall shows starting, so... Uh, Will any of them stand a chance? I don't know. It was kind of cool that that everybody gathered around a fantasy slash sci-fi kind of geeky show. Because it's normally things like American Idol, and I'm like, okay, that's obvious. But uh, like a Twilight Zone-y kind of show? Yeah. (laughs) Yep. Final thoughts on Lost? Anything? It's over. I enjoyed it. Right on. Okay. Thank you, everybody. The end. (laughs) Okay, and we're back. Is it over? Yes. Okay. Yeah, so that's the Lost Season finale. I, I will say, without spoiling, that overall I think if you if you look back at Lost as a show, it was a show that failed as a mystery. I think it succeeded in terms of a character drama. They certainly you know, had characters that you love and that kind of thing, but a true mystery sets things up and pays them off. And Lost was an exercise in hoping that the audience forgets a lot of the time about what had been set up and starting new mysteries, you know. And this is a cliche to say, oh, they didn't answer enough things. But there is a great video College Humor put out this week of all the unanswered things. And it really is true that certain giant, like, plot-related things would just start, you'd be excited, you'd be inquisitive, and then it would go nowhere. And in the end, many of those things are just left dangling. And the only feeling I can get is that's a show that just hoped that you would sort of forget. And eventually it works because I forgot why I was angry. By the time the show was ending, I'm like, huh. You know, (laughs) I had to go and look back and I'm like, wait a minute, you're right. You know, specifically (laughs) this character was never explained. And this guy, what the heck was he even doing there? You know, Um, it reveled in mystery. It loved raising new mysteries. But unfortunately, a great mystery is one that eventually pays off, you know, like the Twilight Zone episodes do. Or I mean, that's such a short 
time you know frame right. to do it in but uh yes that's my final thoughts well, without knowing what you guys are discussing, I guess my two cents are, I think Lost is a great prototype. Um, it proved that a lot could could be done on TV that originally was reserved for film. Yeah. And uh, kept ABC's, you know, like, it, it kept reality shows at bay for a while. Like, So I hope that somebody out there has pieced together an outline that truly will be, okay, here's what the mysteries are going to be. Here's how they're going to be answered. Right. We'll introduce this character this season. We'll resolve this. Like, it really is now motivated to, to do this again, but thoroughly a perfect show, you know? Right. So here's hoping. Maybe J.J. Abrams' next yeah. project, <laughs> well, whatever that is. Super 8, the series. <laughs> we'll, we'll have to see. There's certainly some Abrams-like touches, I thought, toward the end. If- Again, in terms of character, they did a decent job, but in terms of mystery, in a failed experiment, perhaps. Um, cool. So, anyway, this now we come to the tough part of the show. <laughs> All right. Uh, which is that it, just as Lost is is officially ending, uh, this podcast is at a crossroads. Um, Rob and I have been doing this for about two and a half years, I might say. What is this, episode 124? 24. Yeah. <laughs> yes, and 24 is also ending. And so yeah, Law and Order is off the air after 20 years. I right. have to watch the other Law and Orders. <laughs> um, but and this is a tough thing to say. But you know, unfortunately, the reality of a show like this that we produce week in and week out is that it does take time and money. And uh, as much as we love discussing fantasy worlds, we do live in the real one. And uh, it's been difficult to maintain the quality of, of weekly show that we want to lately. And so you know, Rob and I. Uh, talk to each other on the phone and and we've decided that we need to put the show as it exists right now on a hiatus and so um what i want people to do if if they are interested in this show continuing and they you know they wouldn't mind a a different slightly different version of it go to our website which is growing-up-geek.com and leave comments on this episode or uh click on our email link on the right side and let us know you know what would you be willing to follow uh, in terms of this show, if it were not weekly, what format would you be willing to accept? I- is it something where you could see yourself listening to a monthly show, like a once a month show? That there's a show called Geeks On, that's a pretty popular one on iTunes that does this. Um, what about a blog, you know, that would be posted regularly, or or uh, just a more posts on our Twitter stream, you know, or something like that? Let us know. What would you be willing to follow? Uh, gosh, it sounds like a fund drive or something, but it's like, <laughs> is it it's teetering dangerously close? Is this show even, you know, important enough to you that you want would would send us an email to say, hey, I enjoy the show. I hope you come back. Or, you know, something like that. Or is it just like, well, this this rolls over in my iTunes stream and I'll listen to it and, yeah. you know, whatever. Yeah. I, like I said, Rob and I are certainly proud of the 124 now episodes that we've done of this show. And uh, we're going to try to maintain those archives and, and make sure that that is still all there. Um, but, you know, in the meantime, we're going to go on hiatus. We're going to collect up the feedback and we're going to see where we go from here. Maybe we'll be reborn like a phoenix rising from the ashes in, in some new version like kevin costner like kevin costner <laughs> rising from the water drinking his urine um, oh, God. but yeah but that's that's it so we just want uh, your feedback from you guys uh, overall i do want to say thank you so much for listening to this show for the time that you have the two and a half years most podcasts like this probably end within 30 episodes or so statistically and uh, you guys have been listening, you know, for uh, 120 something plus. It's it's really been a pleasure doing this show. It's great to be able to uh, put out something creatively um, when in this kind of economy sure. of consumption. Like we don't make anything off of doing this show. This is just our own pockets and our own time. And I'm very proud of it. I was proud to uh, let people know at uh, PAX, you know, that I had a show and that it had gotten at that point up to like 115 episodes right? Yeah. and that 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 raised some eyebrows like i said well i have a podcast and people's like yeah everybody hears the podcast i'm like i have 115 episodes they're like whoa yeah and i want to say just in general to the geek audience because there was i just read this oddball news story that it was geek pride day and there's a geek pride parade and it just got me thinking we should probably end this show by talking about geek pride if you are a geek and you do listen to the show be proud you know i, I think it is something that is one reason why we love doing this is because we love sort of coming out of the closet every week and you know expressing all, all the. <laughs> I'm serious. All it's right. like it's the kind of thing you can't do 
in certain circles without the eyes glazing over. And it's been nice to actually have people that, you know, what will not just not glaze over, but actually tune in. So, uh, be proud, uh, enjoy geek pride day, uh, as belated as it may be. And uh, I don't think there's any better music to take out the final episode of a geeky show like this than the Ewok song from the end of Return of the Jedi. I, I, I think that's going to have to be what it is. Sounds fitting. I think I'm so. Like, I, was, I was thinking about that. Like, do we want the, the, the out tune from Mystery Science Theater or the whatever? But that'll do it. John Williams. Yeah, the greatest ending music that has ever been recorded for the greatest film series that has ever been made. And... Uh, uh, this is going to be the Craig Kilborn version from the Craig Kilborn <laughs> show. Uh, they played it on acoustic guitar, and I've always loved it. It has a special place in my heart. So uh, thank you all for listening. Uh, we'll be looking forward to your responses. Uh, but uh, thank you for listening all this time. Once again, my name is Brad. I am Rob. Sing along. Yub, yub. Itchocked, yub, nub. Atomi, Toby, Chiki. Tikat, na, friend, nu, wa. Chachi no wa Atomi Tobi Chiki Tikat na friend nu wa Yup yup Only good nu wa Yup yup Only good nu wa Yup yup Celebrate the love Celebrate the love Celebrate the love Everybody Yup yup Chachi yup nub Atomi Tobi Chiki Tikat na Fre Nuwa Noa Ichak Chinoa Atomi Tobi Chiki Tikat na Fre Nuwa Yup Yup Only Kut Nuwa Yup Yup Only Kut Nuwa Yup Yup Celebrate the love Yup Yup Celebrate the love Yup Yup Celebrate the love